Time now to get over to the kitchen and check in for the first time with ABC7 Culinary Director Judy Gallagher. Hi, Judy. Well, hi there, Scott. I thought I'd work on something that I think you're going to really like. I'm making Parmesan crusted pork chops. I'm using nice thin cut pork chops. I'm going to dip them in a panko Italian breadcrumb and, of course, Parmesan cheese. But we're not done yet. We're going to saute some really delicious peppers and onions, and I even have peppered salami to mix all in that, reduce it down with a little vinegar, and we have a more modern take on a classic Italian dish. Stay with me, we're cooking up Parmesan pork chops today in the kitchen. Okay, let's get to our pork chops. Now in this pan, I've been sauteing down some onions and Cubano peppers. What I did was I parboiled some red potatoes last night, and then I just browned them slightly in the same pan that I'm going to do the pork chops. This is where you can buy a very inexpensive value pack of thin cut pork chops. And what I like, I like the fact that they're still on the bone because that gives you some flavor so you don't have to pound them, but it, they're gonna fry up, so delicious. Now I'm using the Italian panko breadcrumbs, so they're much crispier. It's made with that rice flour, the panko, so it gives you that nice crispy texture. You're gonna put it in with the Parmesan cheese, thick shredded Parmesan cheese right into the pan. If you are used to frying in olive oil, you can use a little olive oil. If not, use vegetable oil because this does make it really rich. Because they're thin, they're going to cook pretty quickly on each side. I'd say two minutes per side. And then what you're going to get, I'm going to get a little garlic salt on that. You're going to get that beautiful crust on it, that golden crust that Parmesan cheese gives you. I love, when I'm cooking pork, I always use garlic salt. So salt and pepper them, and then we'll let that fry up. Now, we're going to go over to the pan that has the onions and the peppers. If you want a hotter pepper, by all means, you can do a hotter pepper or mix them in to do some maybe spicy long hots. I have some pepper salami. I'm going to put this in right towards the end. Now, at this point, you can either use white vinegar, which is a more traditional feel with like a sausage and pepper dish or pork chop and pepper dish. I'm going to use a little balsamic and a good quality, one that's aged a little bit. And we're going to simmer that around just a bit because this is going to marry in with the pork. But I really like how the peppered salami just kind of gives it that little umph. If you've ever made a pepperoni sauce, you're literally using pepperoni. It's the same thing. So let's come over and take a look. And you can see, see how it's starting to crust up like that? That's fantastic. So off it goes the other side. Now once that cooks, we're gonna have to put it on a paper towel just to cool that down. That will catch some of the extra um, oil that's on it as well. So we have enough room and enough time to put one more pork chop in the pan and then we're ready to just top the ones that are already cooked. This is just a yummy dish and it really makes the kitchen smell so good. Of course, you can do this with pounded chicken cutlets as well. And my mom used to do it with veal cutlets. So there's lots of different options for you. So there we go. We'll get that pork, that next piece right in there. And then I'm just gonna take my tongs and that will help to layer it over there. Now comes the time that we wanna just fill the dish, right? So peppers with the salami, the onions. Oh my gosh, this is so good. I'm just gonna top that with a little more balsamic and I am ready to serve everybody lunch. There you go, back to you Scott.